Hey everyone, as promised, uh, this is going to be my video on um, MVVM, or Model View View Model. Alright, so uh, what are the origins of um, MVVM, and how does it differ from MVC, and what is the fundamental concept behind it, and why is it important to understand, and why might you want to use and MVVM. Well, so if you recall from the previous video, MVC is kind of a general um, framework. It's kind of abstract. There's a lot of implementations of MVC, and but in general, it's the coordination of MVC or the model view controller um, with router, and it's um, used in a lot of places now. The thing with uh, most uh, frameworks that adopt this MV star um, pattern list or set of patterns is that they have a few common traits. Now, MVVM comes from, I believe it's Ma Martin Fowler, and he came up with the idea of a model view presenter, which um, it is similar to MVVM, but MVVM is a specific implementation of it, and it's specific to the UI. So model view presenter is where you have a object called a presenter, which presents the coordinated model view. Now the reason we use MVVM is that it actually has a framework or system that's replicable and it makes more sense for dynamic user interaction. So, how does this work? Well, um, so you'll notice I have two types of arrows here on this diagram I've made. Uh, one is this blue arrow and then I have, <coughs> excuse me, the regular black arrows and I annotate here as well it was harder to annotate on the MPC so I decided not to because there's differences in the frameworks <clears throat> so view model is kind of the essential part of this um, so when you think of the view model the view model is responsible for most of the coordination um, and so this is usually replicated on front-end frameworks. I've listed all the front-end frameworks that are kind of popular here that do this. And uh, the view model will update the model and it will also read the model. Pretty simple. And there's also data in interchange and you know in the background you can have other sorts of services that uh, do other things to the data. The update part though is uh, generally standard for, for its capabilities. Now, how the request goes is it's the same as MVC. You, you interact with this router. Um, here I'm assuming you're not using a single page application where basically the server is generating this view. So if you're using a single page application, how it works, this is the modern way is you have a single HTTP handler that's slap, called called the app handler presumably and then the view initiates um, the UI so MVVM again is, is used mainly for UI and so the view and view model communicate for what's called data binding and so the view model will fetch the correct models and then bind the data to the view. There's also command binding and command binding is where um, you have say a filter on a search tool or you have something that's dynamic that'll trigger an Ajax response or a um, any 
HTTP request or there needs to be some kind of coordination between um, your store of objects and your uh, presentation. So these are both two-way relationships and then the UI events is a one-way relationship from the view to the view model and the reason this is in a different arrow is because I want to emphasize that the UI events creates a feedback loop and so this will usually trigger some kind of change here on the view model updating the model reading the model so that's the potential for dynamicism very rarely do you have data binding and command binding going from the view to the view model without a UI event. Um, and the reason why is because UI events are how the user interacts with the page or interacts with the UI. So any UI event is going to create a cascading effect of these events um, or any of these events create a cascading effect with the, with the loop that goes through um, the user session which is initiated through the application and so finally we have the view model it reads the model updates the model that's pretty straightforward and uh, so how this differs from MVC MVC is really um, I wouldn't call it bare bones because it, it's still st highly structured but MVVM I would suggest for the use of UI um, you have frameworks like UJS Ember.js, which is really slow, I wouldn't use. <laughs> Knockout, Marionette, and also Microsoft.net, uh, Windows, um, what is it, WPF? Something, it, it's uh, Windows Platform, what is it? <laughs> I'll search this up. It's very important, actually. Windows Presentation Foundation. Um, now, it's MVVM, so it has events, and um, that's the standard for doing UI uh, in C Sharp and, you know, .NET on the Windows platform. So it's it's taken very seriously. It's, it's pretty established, I would say. Um, at the time it was introduced, it was kind of a new way of thinking about it. And it makes it so that... Um, there's not too much confusion about where the data is coming from, you know, um, how to update the document object model or the DOM. So uh, these frameworks, um, I, I suggest using Vue.js. Um, if you're wondering how, or how, and uh, sorry, why. React.js and Angular aren't considered MVVM in my opinion. Uh, React is just the view and very often you'll adapt React to either do some form of MVC or MVVM. I would say it's closer to MVC than MVVM uh, for, for React applications that get highly complex. Though um, MVVM, if you're using something like Redux, um, it, it's not even in the same category, I would, I would say. Now, um, Angular is an MVC because it's, it's very component-based and, uh, again, highly structured towards the, the model view controller type of communication. Angular 1 was vaguely MVC. Um, there wasn't... I think they called it Star VC because the model was anything you wanted. Uh, so there's a lot of ambiguity uh, with this sort of stuff. I hope this gives you an idea of what MVVM is used for and uh, what it is. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like this video, all the rest. See you.